All right, let's make a start as it's time. So we're going to start laying down in um, constructive rest position, which is a very grand title, but it does exactly what it says on the tin. So we're, we're resting, but we're awake. We're just going to have the soles of the feet on the mat. And up to you here, really, if you want a little cushion under your head or even a flat block, that can be quite nice. Or um, another thing you could do, if your back's feeling a little bit tight from the day, is to just put your bolster under your knees and your feet will still touch the ground. So there's a little bit in this meditation where we'll, we'll think about the feet. Uh, but that's, that's actually quite nice as well, especially if your back's just feeling a little bit a bit sensitive. Okay. Good. So just take a moment here to settle into your breath. Starting to really allow the fizz of the day to release. And just gently allowing yourself to feel aware of where your body is in contact with the ground. And just noticing your thoughts whatever they are, how they might come and go, change topic. And we're just going to take a little breathing, a guided breathing meditation as we start. And again, this idea of really boosting our immune systems by giving ourselves uh, a proper relaxation. So completely um, aware that you are practicing relaxation. And just a nice affirmation for you as we come into that practice. I create breathing spaces for myself every day Moments that I spend only in the here and now, when I absorb all that is beautiful, kind and good in this life, and in turn, offer it to others as well. And if you like, just internally, you can bring to mind and name things that maybe you found really enjoyable today. It could be as simple as just feeling the sun on your face, maybe remembering time spent at a favourite beach, by a river, just looking at how blue the sky was earlier this evening. And when we start to cultivate awareness of how just very ordinary simple things can bring us great happiness, the more we shift our awareness to those moments, the more we retrain ourselves to notice more good in each day. And that is a practice. So some of you may have read or the, the books of or heard of Rick Hansen, a, a neuroscientist who's written a lot about um, retraining your thinking process. And for some of us, this is harder than others. So, I mean, I, <laughs> unless you go and have some laboratory tests done as part of a project, we, we won't know for sure, but some of us have an amygdala that is more prone to retaining negative reactions and negative, negative experiences. So for some of us it takes more practice to redirect attention to the things that have brought us happiness in the day rather than the negative things. I actually find this really hard. So a classic example for me would be if I play a piece of music and something doesn't go as I'd like, well, usually several things, uh, they're the things I remember. 
So it's reframing your internal dialogue to see the bigger picture of a whole day or of, a, of, of an activity in your day. So just coming back to that very simple, could be a few things today that you just thought, oh, that was really nice, or I really enjoyed that, or someone said something that made you feel really nice, really happy. And then just for a moment, Imagine um, an hourglass, you know, like an egg timer, and just bring to mind the upper part of that. And in the upper part of that, you're going to imagine something that's caused you distress or suffering or has made you feel sad in some way. Maybe not today, maybe another day, or maybe it's something that occurs regularly. Just feel aware of it without reacting, just, just knowing that thing, all those several things. And just hold them in your awareness and see if you can breathe, just five breaths here, being able to notice that thing that's not pleasurable, not enjoyable. And then picture the narrow neck of the hourglass. And this is going to symbolise the point where you just let those thoughts filter through that narrow neck and just feel aware of them filtering through and at the same time your breath and noticing how you can observe them and just let them filter through that narrow neck, just letting go of the attention on them for now. As you continue just to breathe here for a moment, noticing how you can breathe calmly, feel aware of something not so comfortable and let it pass by. And as it passes you by, bring your awareness to the bottom of the hourglass, the base and the core of its strength to, to hold it upright. And as you look at this in your mind's eye, just notice your feet on the ground and feel just how grounded you are here at the moment. How you can be calm and strong and breathe. Maybe almost visualizing your feet like roots of a tree Notice how you can allow anxious thoughts to be there and let them just trickle down to the bottom. And when you send them down into the ground, how you're able to face them with calm strength and without reacting, just breathing. And then let's just count five breaths here together. Inhaling, exhaling one, inhaling, exhaling two, inhaling, exhaling three, inhaling, exhaling four, inhaling and exhaling To allow the breath to stay with that nice free full breath and start to rock the knees side to side so if you have a bolster under your knees just move that out of the way and otherwise we'll just start to come into rolling twists here so sometimes when we're still for a long time get a little bit numb a little bit achy so just you can bring the arms actually up at um, shoulder height and out to the side and just start to deepen the twist gradually so there's no rush to make the range of motion bigger. 
But as you do make that range of motion bigger, notice how you can feel aware of your thigh bone rotating in your hip joints. And pretty much in opposite rotation, so the bottom leg goes externally, the top leg goes internally. And just moving side to side through that quickly. And the next time that you've done right and left, and don't worry if you haven't, won't kill you, <laughs> just come back to the centre, and give both knees a little hug into your chest. And then you can just give a little hug and a release a couple of times just to lengthen out through the low back a little bit there. And then keep the right knee hugged in and extend the left leg long. So just a soft reach away with your left leg and a gentle squeeze in with your right. And then again you can bring a little bit of movement to your ankle. Flexing, extending, rolling. And then again, a gentle stretch for the back of the right leg. So it doesn't have to be a full-on hamstring stretch here. You can just give it a gentle ease in and then just flex and extend through the foot just to lengthen out through the calf, the back of the knee, maybe into the back of the thigh. And then give that knee a little hug into your chest. And then take a breath in and take a full stretch. Reach arms and legs away. And then hug the left knee in. Again, just a gentle reaching away with the straight leg there. So it's not completely collapsed, but again, we're not gripping. And then squeeze in gradually of that left leg, rolling the ankle a few times one way and a few times the other. And then extending that leg straight up. Again, you might have it quite bent to start with and then maybe start to straighten the leg by pulling up on the left kneecap but doesn't need to be straight for now okay maybe ease the leg a little closer if it feels good but again no strain in the shoulders or the neck as you do this great and then again a full stretch reach your arms and legs away and a little hug of the knees into the chest and then from there roll to one side and push yourself up to seated. And we'll just come to cross leg for a moment and take a spinal mobilization here. So we'll work um, into the neck and the shoulders a little bit as well um, this evening. So just lightly resting the hands on the knees. Um, and we're gonna use the hands on the knees to draw the chest forward. So you can pull gently against the fronts of the knees Think about really extending the back of the heart to the sky, lengthen the neck softly, and then as you breathe out next, tuck the tail under and bring some flexion, let the head go. And then we'll do that again. So it's almost like cat cow in a cross leg position, inhaling, exhale to coil in. And again, really let the head go round the back, let the pelvis roll back. Let's do that once more. Inhaling, opening up. Exhaling, let the pelvis tip back, let the head go, curl into the upper back, spreading the shoulders. Inhale, up the centre. Good. And then just bring the left arm up, nice and softly coming into a side stretch as you breathe out. And then inhale back through the centre, nice sort of fluid. Exhale, over to the other side, good. And then inhale through the centre, take a twist to the right. So sometimes we do this in the morning, but with a much more solar energetic focus so keep this really soft unraveling tension come back to the center lovely and then just walk the fingertips forwards a little bit so if it feels really um, tight in the low back again you could use your bolster here even and just rest the forearms here and just have a little wriggle out side to side and then if it feels like you want to move a little deeper you can push the bolster away that's it lovely and then maybe you can bring yourself all the way down. But if that isn't something that's helpful for you, keep the bolster here. And then just let the head go wherever you are for a moment. Draw the tail back down to the earth and really let your head be heavy. So if you don't have a prop, you might even make little potato masher fists with your hands 
and rest your head there for a moment. And just give the head a little roll side to side. So you might feel a bit of a massage onto your forehead and just again, really feeling that you let go of any tension in the base of the, or the axis of the, of the skull and the neck there. Good. And if you've just got comfy there, just stay there for a couple more breaths. Don't rush to come up. If you've been there for a little while, just pad the hands up and slowly come to upright. And then we're going to walk the fingertips back a little bit, lean back, bend the elbows and hug the upper arms in and then gently press the ground away to really open up across the chest. You can just lengthen the neck here, you don't have to let the head go all the way back. And then bring it back to your seated position again. Swap the cross of your legs and we'll just do a little bit of mobilising for the neck here. So again, just lightly resting the hands on the knees, so it will be your, probably your not favourite leg and it will feel strange. Imagine that you're going to hold an egg um, under the chin there. You don't want to crush it in, you don't want to let go of it. So we're keeping space there and lift the chin up and over. And as you do that, start to bring it down and maybe feel a bit of release into the muscles in the neck. So it's a feeling of going up and over and lengthening through, you might feel it into uh, the trapezius muscles there, maybe even the rhombus muscles that go right a bit deeper into the shoulders. And then keeping that shape, we're just going to make a little half moon towards the left shoulder, stretching the right side of the neck a bit more, and then towards the right shoulder. So a little half moon, just side to side. And you might find that you can start to make that half moon a little bigger, lifting the chin at the other side. But again, just nice and gentle and fluid there. And if it feels a bit crunchy and a bit cracky, don't panic, just keep breathing. So just do one more to each side. And then the next time you come to the middle, gently lift the chin up and then get your um, fingers in the base of the skull there. So right in the probably in the hairline, in the nape of the neck, and just kind of spider the fingers and give yourself a little massage there in the back of the neck. Good. And then just move that up the back of the head a bit more, making kind of circles around and around, or just whatever feels instinctive to you. And then as you move up, you can get your thumbs into that little knobbly part there and just give them a little rotate around. And that can often feel really quite tender in some of those attachments there. So our head's heavy. <laughs> it takes quite a little bit of effort to hold it up. Give it a little massage out. And then from there, bring the thumbs all the way out from the jawline around, and then come up the side of the jaw. And again, there's a little tender attachment point Almost like when you eat an orange that's sour or those fizzy sweets and it sets off that feeling if you ever get that. It kind of feels like that, just right there in the attachment there. Just give it a gentle massage a few times one way, a few times the other. It might make your mouth water thinking about fizzy sweets. <laughs> just release there. Good. And then come, just bring the hands back down, come back to that seated position, give the shoulders a few rolls. One way, a few rolls the other. Again, you might have a little bit of clunking and cracking. And just try to keep the motion fluid. Great. And then from here, we'll roll forwards and just kind of worm our way onto the belly. So you can end up on your forearms in sphinx pose. So again, if you've spent a lot of the day maybe hunched over and working, We'll just spend a bit of time here to visualise undoing that. So even though we're supporting ourselves here, we're just going to keep this nice and soft, so elbows under the shoulders, and start to broaden the collarbones and draw the shoulders down. So is that feeling again of the armpits plugging down there. Energise the legs just a little bit so they're not flopping around, and slightly draw the low belly in, so just softly, gently there. And then visualise lengthening each of your vertebrae forwards and up. And then as you come to the mid-back, so 
So just below the shoulder blades, really visualize sending that forwards and up, and then lift the gaze at the last. And then tuck the chin in. And just keep your breath moving freely here. And again, extend the head up, just nice and gently. Keep the low belly a little bit tamed, good. That's it, just do one more like that. Good. And then from here, we'll just roll all the way back down onto the belly. So keep your hands under your shoulders or move them back a little bit. So almost like you're going to come into a cobra, but we're not just yet. So you're going to extend your, hang on, I always get confused, right arm out to the side. <laughs> so reach your right arm out to the side. I'll mirror you. So this is what always confuses me. This arm is coming out at shoulder height or maybe a bit lower if your shoulders feel particularly achy today. Press into the left hand under you here and roll back onto the right hip. And then if it feels good there, you can bring the uh, left leg behind you like a kickstand. And you'll feel that opening into the front of the left shoulder. Now, if it feels really tight on the muscle attachment there, give yourself a kind of little rock in and out of it. Just a small motion there to massage out the front of the shoulder there. Try to let the head be heavy. And if you feel like there's a lot of strain in your neck, just roll out of it for a moment and pop your blanket or a flat block under your head there. You should be able to just let the temple rest on the head, yeah. If it doesn't feel like enough release for you, you can bring the arm a little bit higher up. If it feels too intense, bring the arm a little lower towards your hip. And again, just letting the breath be very soft here. Good, lovely. Really nice. Just take one more breath there. Inhale. And then as you exhale, come back to feel the centre and just changing sides. So extending the, the left arm, pressing into your right palm to roll onto the other hip. Yeah. Good. And, and again, when you're ready, you can use the other leg like a kickstand there. Letting the head be heavy. Maybe rolling back and forth a couple of times there. Just gradually increasing the stretch into the shoulder. Great. Take one more breath there. And then roll it back through the middle. And then from here we'll just come into a gentle cobra. So hug the upper arms in. Just energise the legs a little bit so the tops of the feet are pressing down. Draw the shoulders down and breathe in, roll it up, breathe in, breathe out to ripple it all the way back down. And then press into the hands, sit back through all fours, inhale, and exhale to child's pose. So, again, if you want to, you can find a cushion or a block to pop under your head here. Or if you want to take the more fully restorative one with your bolster and lay on your bolster, you can. So we won't stay here for quite as long this evening. So you might find you're happy just being on the ground. You can always pop something behind your knees if they bother you there as well. And then everyone just allow the arms to soften back alongside the hips. And you can, again, find that slight little massage into the forehead by just gently turning the head side to side there. And again, feel that there's length in the low back and that you can really breathe into the sides of the ribs, the back of the ribs there. Two more breaths there. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Slowly make your way up to seated. And we'll take a supported twist. So I would suggest you'll need at least a bolster, a cushion and a block. <laughs> Maybe a blanket as well. So kind of have everything ready. 
So it's quite nice to have a cushion for your head here. And then options with the bolster are to have it almost as a laying on your side twist and you can use the bolster to lay along your shin and then you probably might want a, a brick under your head so it's not so much a twist more a, a supported side stretch and then you can start to open out a little bit as, as the as we breathe breathe on or you could come onto your back with a flat block or a blanket and properly roll to one side here and allow the upper body to open out. So it sort of depends a little bit on how your low back's feeling. You might start here, say take five breaths and then open it out. And you can always extend and change into the bolster variation after a few breaths if one feels a bit intense. Okay. So yeah, choose which variation you want to be in. And remember as well that you can bring the knees higher up or further away, just according to what feels like it gives your back and your, the side of your waist a little bit of release without any strain in the upper body. So um, the head can be just uh, neutral for this one and then eventually again you might want to turn the head to one side and if that gets a little bit too much then again you can just bring it back to centre and just feel length through the sides of the neck. Lovely. So the block between the, the knees or upper legs is a good one to remember if you ever get any back pain in bed as well. So you can lay on your side with a pillow between the knees and the pillow nicely under your head so that you've got the, a neutral uh, alignment of your neck. And then as you settle in here, just really feeling again that you can breathe into the side body, you can expand your lungs more here, breathe into the expanding, that sense of expanding across the collarbones. Of course we don't really expand them but we do allow the fascia across the chest to expand the muscles between your ribs, those intercostal muscles to release and expand. And just let go of some tension around the shoulders, the chest. And again, we're encouraging uh, or undoing some of the more kyphotic posture that we find ourselves in, so that overly hunched upper back that often we find ourselves in when we're working or watching TV, looking at a phone or a computer. And again, when we think about, or when you think about how a screen works with those very quickly flickering images several times a second, and that we're in a slightly hunched, tense state, all of this is just, without us being aware of it, creating um, low level stress in our body and in our, in our minds. So we're really undoing those effects on a subtle level here. Good, so we'll just take another couple of breaths here. And then start to think about changing sides. So although we're nicely supported, I'm not a fan of staying in passive twists for too long, just in case we're talking into the sacrum there. So, just come into the other side gradually again, don't rush. And you might find that one side, perhaps you need a little bit more padding for your head, or the twist won't go so deep to start with. Maybe one shoulder struggles to soften down. So just noticing that. 
or maybe it was on the other side and, and now on this side you're feeling a little bit more spacious and relaxed. So just noting that if you can, again without any kind of um, a worry about that, just noticing so that the next time you come to practice this shape, whether it's in a more dynamic class or in a restorative class like this, that you just know that you may need to breathe a little bit more space into one side. And perhaps you start to notice in your daily habits that there's one side you use more often. And in a twist, maybe that gives you more range of motion. Or in a, you know, using one side, that side becomes more tense and doesn't want to open out. noticing we just again we start to bring that sense of presence and, um, and just mindful calm awareness into all of our activities so how many times have you been rushing and ended up stumbling or banging your knee or <laughs> dropping something. We'll know that pattern of rush and tension. And again, let's just take three more breaths here, consciously softening the jaw, the sides of the neck, releasing the teeth if they're clenched. And then just slowly, again, unwinding gradually. And as you come back to your, your back, you can keep a little pillow under your head if you've got one. So it just gives the knees a little squeeze in. And then take those froggy leg circles. So a few times one way. And then a few times the other way. And so from here you can just gently press yourself up to uh, seated and we'll take um, supported fish, so the supported back bend <coughs> in essence uh, for the upper back. So you can again have as many or as little props as you want for this one um, and in fact if you if you really feel that you need uh, that extra bit of space in your back today you might even just want to use your, your brick shaped block and lay over that. You can always pop the blanket over it just to soften it a little bit and you might have that on the lower edge and really allow the shoulders to open back here or even the higher edge for those of you that have been practicing this for a while. You can have it on that higher shape there and extend back. If that's all a little bit too active we'll use the block this way, uh, sorry, bolster this way, with the bottom just off the edge, and you're just going to open the shoulders evenly around the side of the bolster there, so make sure it's in the middle, and again, if it feels too much on your neck, just pop a little block there, and you might find after a few breaths that you feel you can release that away, and just let the arms fall out to the side, wherever is giving you a little bit of release here, but without strain, lovely. And again, feel free to have a few breaths with the legs in butterfly and then maybe extend them out straight. Great. And so here, really feeling that release into the muscles in the chest, the pecs, right into the shoulder head. And then feel how that can follow down the inner line of your arms all the way out to your fingertips through the palm of the hand. So the fingers will lightly curl and the backs of the hands are heavy. And then again, as you breathe in, really feeling the space around your ribs to inhale a little bit more deeply. And as you exhale, 
inhale, fill you send the exhale out across the chest, out along the inner line of the arms, really releasing all the way into the backs of the hands. And again, just checking in if there's any gritting of the teeth. You can soften the back of the throat, the sides of the throat. Back of the head is heavy and those little muscles around the base of the skull can really relax. And then again, feeling the inner corners of the eyes soften. Feeling a broadening across the brow. More space between the eyebrows and feeling that there's a third eye centre there just softening back. Noticing colours if the eyes are closed and just noticing. If you need to adjust the position of the legs towards straight, go ahead. And again, we'll just take three breaths here. Using these breaths to start to prepare yourself to move out of the shape. Then as you inhale, start to draw the knees together if the legs are up to the side. Press the soles of the feet onto the mat. And then press into the elbows and the hands. Just maneuver yourself away from the block or the Cushion. Extend the legs straight forwards. Uh, bring the bolster with you, or whatever tower of cushions you've got, and just pop that between your legs, grabbing enough things <laughs> so that you can take a forward fold and be relatively comfortable here. So again, you can always bend the knees if you need and keep this nice and passive. Make it big towel with your blanket if the hamstrings are tight. So the other way to practice this one is to put the bolster against the wall and your feet can, well it depends on, <laughs> on your proportions really, but um, you can wedge the bolster somewhere and your feet are fairly close, that can feel quite nice, if not don't worry, and you can just let yourself hang there. And if it's not quite enough, just move a bit further away. And that's another way to practice that one. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, if you find that you, you feel a bit suffocated here, you can just turn your head to the side. Spend a few breaths with the head one way. And then the other. And in this shape, just notice how, even though we're relaxed, how there is a movement in the abdominals with your breath. So as you breathe out, there's that natural drawing in and up and a little tone into your abdominal muscles. As you breathe in, you can expand into the back body. As you breathe out, you can bring tone into the front body. And again, that's very gentle, no hard gripping there. Noticing how that gives 
bit of a massage to your belly. A bit of a stretch out through the back line of the body in a really um, comprehensive way. So the legs are opening the whole back line of the body. And then if you want to turn the head the other way, go ahead and turn the head. Inevitably, as your thoughts wander, maybe you have a, you know slight irritation. Allow yourself to notice it. Adjust if you need calmly. Just stay here for another three breaths, breathing in, breathing out, inhaling, exhaling, inhale, and on this exhale, tone the belly a little more to bring yourself gradually up to seated. Great. And again, just take a bit of time to orient there. And then you could just push the blocks forwards a little bit, or the props. Again, just a gentle lean back in your uh, torso there onto the arms. And keep the feet nice and wide, so almost mat width. And then we'll just roll out side to side here. Great. Nice and gently. yourself back to cross legs and again we'll just take a little cat cow there so inhale expand the chest exhale let the pelvis tilt back and round and then inhale back to center and find that neutral spine good okay so we'll come to the legs up the wall variations now um, <clears throat> so just spin yourself around find um, somewhere to extend the legs and or hook them on a chair if, if you don't have the space there. So Rosie, I'm just wondering, those white doors at the end, are you able to send your, your legs up there? Or not really? Yeah, it might it might be a nice um, a nice place for you just to you know, it's a nice passive lengthening for the hamstrings as well when we send the legs up here. Um, so try, and if you don't like it, come back to where you usually are. <laughs> Good. Great, so um, maybe just before you get comfy, you might want something to cover the eyes or just to put across your brow. If you have a, you know, like a lavender eye pillow, you can use that or um, just a, a t-shirt. And also, if you know that your feet get cold or you, you start to get cold, just have your blanket to put over the centre of your body and maybe your socks. So although it's, it's still warm, when you, when you become still like this, you start to feel the chill, um, especially as it's getting dark a little earlier. Okay. So yeah, let's start with the legs uh, completely together. So ankles roughly touching. And just have a sense here of your thighs dropping back into your hip socket. So you really have um, almost that sense of the feet being grounded even as they're elevated. As if you were standing up and, and pushing back against the legs into the hips.
as we um, are in this vertical variation, um, I thought this was a, a nice analogy or visualisation while you're practising this sense of sending thoughts down to earth and just kind of losing, losing track of them and letting them melt back and forward. So this is uh, by uh, Emily Dickinson and it's called The Lost Thought. I felt a clearing in my mind, as if my brain had split. I tried to match it scene by scene, but could not make them fit. The thought behind I strove to join, unto the thought before, but sequence ravelled out of reach like balls upon the floor. So I think that's really nice um, non-yogic <laughs> non uh, poem actually, or non-yogi poem, but to kind of get that, you know, we get that sense of drifting sometimes when we're in these restorative postures, and that's just absolutely as it should be. So there's a thought and you, it comes and it goes and everything unravels, and the thoughts are still there, but it just doesn't really matter what they are. Just let them roll around and just be where you are. So sometimes we think that with meditation we have to empty thoughts or not have thoughts and um, that's not really what the practice is for, for many of us unless maybe you're the Dalai Lama <laughs> so um, staying with that awareness of the ground and the thoughts roaming around rolling out of your head we'll just bring the legs into a straddle variation here So as you move in and out of these shapes, just scan around again, notice if there's been any little holding on again in, in the jaw or the eyes or the sides of the neck. And yeah, if you're not comfortable with the legs in the straddle shape, do just bring them into Baddha straight away and you'll get that same release through the, or similar release through the inner legs. And then as you rest it, if there is, you know, a softening and you feel you can take the legs a little wider, you get a little more lengthening through the inner line of the legs there, go ahead. And again, this passive hip release is what we're cultivating here. Releasing pressure on the pelvic floor as well and our abdominals that have been holding us up all day. As well as lengthening and keeping good range of motion around the pelvic floor. start to think about bringing the legs back up to vertical and again we'll just linger here and just noticing that lightness and fizziness in the legs now because sometimes that can be a bit distracting and off-putting again just noticing it as a different sensation Maybe noticing how soft and slow and even your heart rate is now. Okay, 
sink in very gradually. Use your next couple of breaths to bring awareness back to your legs and to begin drawing them down into your chest. So again, do this nice and gradually. And you can just stay in a little ball for a moment and then gradually roll to one side. Again, let yourself rest on one side and if you've had your eyes covered or closed, you can just keep the eyes closed as you come to your side for a moment. And then you can gradually just allow the light to return a little bit and we're going to come into Shavasana from here. So you can just slide yourself back to laying down with a blanket to keep warm. Even if you just put the blanket over your belly, that can be quite comforting. And again, if you want any kind of uh, you know, support under your head, do take that or under your knees. If um, you know that's quite nice sometimes to just take a bit of pressure out of your lower back as you lay down. And then just see if you can let the arms and legs fall out to the side. And actually, similar to supported fish, if you wish, you could prop yourself up with the bolster. Propped up, well, it's not the same because we're not in a back bend, but if you wanted to have a, a slightly more elevated resting position, there's also the option to take that little propped up position there with support for the head. Well, that can actually be really lovely. In fact, this propped Shavasana, I think, if you're struggling to sleep ever, this is quite a nice way to be because it takes the stress out of being awake when you think you should be asleep. And you could perhaps do your own body scan meditation here or actively listen just to some really calming music and then bring yourself back to laying down. And that can be extremely helpful if you're struggling to sleep. Good. So just allowing now really to feel that arms and legs fall evenly away from the center of the body. And we'll take a short body scan here Every time you exhale, we're going to send release and softening into the body part that we're drawing awareness to. So just breathing in, and as you breathe out, send release of tension through your feet. And then breathing in, feel aware of your legs, and breathe out all tension in the legs. And then breathing in, feel the belly rise, the ribs expand. And then breathing out, feel the belly soften, the hips soften into the ground, the glutes release. Again, inhaling into the chest. And then exhaling, feeling the chest soften, both front and back, melting into the ground. Inhaling, feeling aware of the arms, from the hands all the way up. And then exhale from the shoulders all the way down the arms and out through the hands. Let's do that again. So inhaling through the hands, up to the shoulders. And then exhale from the shoulders, down the arms and out through the hands. And then breathing in, feel the air move through the nose. Breathing out, feel your throat relax. Breathing in, feel length through the sides of the neck. And breathing out, feel the back of the neck and the sides of the neck soften even more. And 
breathing in, if you're aware of the back of the head. And breathing out, feel the back of the head soften even more, relaxing the axis of the skull and the muscles in the back of the neck. And breathing in, aware, in, feel aware of the cheeks, the forehead. And breathing out, unclench the teeth, soften the cheeks, relax your brow. And then breathing in from the soles of the feet all the way above the crown of the head through the entire body and breathe out any remaining tension from the crown of the head all the way out through the toes. And just watching your breath here, feeling as you breathe in, the body is long. And as you breathe out, the body softens and relaxes even more. Breathing in from below the feet to above the crown of the head and breathing out, softening even more. And as you breathe in, feel the ground press against your body, holding it in space so that as you breathe out, you're completely held in that soft, relaxed Just start to be aware of your fingers and toes. And just one by one, pressing the thumb into each of your fingers. And you can go back and forward a couple of times between the fingers. And give the wrists and ankles a little ready just start to take a bit of a stretch so again don't rush take a deeper breath in and again you can stay there for a few more moments there's absolutely no rush to move and um, yeah you can just take your time to come around um, I'll see you really soon I hope you all sleep really well. <laughs> I'm sure you will. And enjoy the sun this weekend. Namaste.